the OEMs getting involved with digital retailing, I understand that they're listening to the customers. So I think that's a good thing. But what they really need to listen to is listen to the dealers. You know, really need to listen to the dealers because the dealers are the ones that have to execute. Okay. And so before you can execute on anything, you have to lay out a process. You know, you have to make sure you have the right processes. Then you have to get the right people in place. Mm. Then we can talk about how we're going to execute this digital retailing strategy. Then we're going to talk about how we're going to put the buttons on the website and where we're going to put those buttons. You know, there's so much more to it. Like even digital retailing in itself is almost a culture. Like you can't have all these buttons on your website talking about digital retailing, buy now, act quick, do this. But when you come into the dealership, there's no branding around that. There's nothing. So what if you were on the website and you looked at all this great stuff, buy quick, you know, start the process now, but you decided not to convert on the website. So you yep. didn't you, you didn't submit your information, but you walk into the dealership and all you see is 10 grand off, 190 uh, lease payment. You see, but you don't see anything about buying vehicles fast because they should still be able to transact fast, of course. even in the dealership. So that's where I think that just going back to the OEMs, it's it's great that let's put this thing in here because we're seeing other people like the Teslas and stuff like that. They're having success. But if you really dig, in, dig into Tesla, there's so much more into that process. Oh, you know, there's more. there's so much more into their infrastructure that you can't with dealerships. I mean, it just takes time, you know, and again, so you have to really get back to the the pencil and paper and dial it back down to like, OK. What percentage of our customers actually want to do this? You know, look at our demographics. Look, what kind of volume are we seeing? And then let's take a look at our heat map. You know, let's pilot this on our website. And then let's relook at it again in 90 days. Like how many OEMs have went out there and pushed out digital retailing to dealers, but then at least after 90 days or six months, went back to the dealers and sat down and talked about what did it look like? What did it look like when it entered your CRM? What are your salespeople saying? What are your customers saying? You know, that's the part mm-hmm. that's missing is because what I've seen with digital retailing with the dealers I've consulted with is we're changing a lot. Like, it's never like, <laughs> oh, we're going to hook up with this digital retailing tool. and We're good to go. Like, I just had a conversation with a guy last night. He was like, man, our digital retailing tool was it was giving the customer a fee that was not the right fee. And he was like, we got to have a phone call, but it should it should constantly be evaluated and should constantly be changed. And I think that's where the OEMs have a huge opportunity. It's just maybe just to listen a little bit more. I understand what they're trying to accomplish. I know what they want to do. I'm with them. Like if I'm buying a car, I would love to do most of it either online or do it 100%. However, they have to really look at the friction of the process and make sure we remove all that friction to make sure it's a smooth experience.